Again, he's the pride of Wales. He's Jack Tank Shore, and he joins us now via the magic of Zoom. There he is. What's up, Jack? How are you? Oh, good, Ariel. Oh, good. How are you? I'm doing great. Congratulations on the way. Is that a Hasbula doll behind you? What is going on over there? Yeah, that's Hasbula. I brought that for my Twitch stream, but uh, he scared the dog, so I have to hide him away. <laughs> I have to hide him away when uh, when I'm not on stream. What is that? Is like a is like a uh, like a stuffed doll? No, no, it's like a um, a cardboard cutout. Okay, why are you a big fan of his? Yes, massive fan. His uh, his Love his Instagram. His rival was at the card, I think, on Saturday. Did you see him? The other dude. No, really? He was there. Yeah. What's his name? Um, the Abdul or the something. Restaurant. That's right. Yeah. No, I didn't see him. I didn't know he was there. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes, he was there. I saw him there. Um, all right. Well, congratulations, man. Wow. What a performance. What a win. I, like I said, you got, you know, like they were giving out finished bonuses. You should have got, you know, they were being very generous. Did you not get anything? That would have been fight of the night. And I hate to sound greedy here because they gave out nine, but I feel like you kind of got robbed on that one. Yeah, I thought we had it in the bag, especially after that um, that third round. Yeah, uh, and you know, not many fights actually went the distance, so I thought we had it. But um, no, I haven't heard nothing yet. Who knows? I may get uh, may get a little sneaky bonus, perhaps somewhere along the line. But uh, nothing, nothing, nothing as of yet. Could you describe, like you know, like I said, you're 16 and 0. You have fought on cards. Last couple of years were you know totally different with no fans. Walking out. Uh, the Welsh fans, they're very supportive. I keep hearing if there, there was a big enough arena that UFC could go there easily. Just the, the walk out, the experience all week to get that support, to have the fans back. What was it like for you as you were getting to the fight? It was just be better than anything I could have imagined. I mean, I think this is the, the third time I've been scheduled to fight on a, on a UFC London card. And um, you know, I haven't had my last three. I've been in front of small or no crowd. So to go from like an empty arena to to a packed house in front of a UK crowd. And they were just relentless from the weigh-ins, from, from the walk. I mean, I remember waiting to walk out and there was about 15 Welsh flags sort of draped over the barriers. I was walking past, they were chucking in my face and it was just incredible. Like it was everything I ever thought it would be. Um, and then even in the fight, to, to hear them throughout phases of the fight and after the fight, it, I just, I, I can't even put it into words that it, it just meant so much. And um, the, the, the feeling that, that it gave me was just so surreal. So they put you and Corey back to back. Uh, unfortunately, it did not go her way. Did you feel like you had to to pick things up to to get the the Welsh fans happy with uh, with you coming on right after her? Are you even thinking? Are you even aware at that point because you're next that she's you know that she lost the fight? To be honest, I didn't even know that um, she lost. I mean, I, we watched like the first two rounds in the changing room, and then we was in the uh, it went the, the the fight went a distance, and, and we were sort of waiting in the hallway to walk out. And uh, because the crowd was so loud in the, I, I didn't even hear, um, hear the decision over the mic. It was just a case of, I knew if I had finished. And then obviously we found out after that she lost, but I, I don't think any, anything other than um, anything could have got the fans down, to be honest. They, right. you know, they, would, they would just win, lose or draw. They would just, they just seemed to get more bonkers and bonkers as the night went on. And um, it was just insane. I mean, you know, for Corey's fight, I know, I know it didn't go away, but I, I could just hear the, even in the change room, I could hear the crowd going, absolutely bizarre all the way through it so but yeah it, it was nice to obviously especially for the welsh to it, it would have been a shame for us to come away with, with two losses you know no no shade on corey or nothing like that right. she's, she's got the the world's her oyster but um especially how young she is but it, it was obviously nice for uh for her to come away with a win at least for uh for all the welsh that made the journey um so i i don't know if you do you pay attention to these things i was surprised that we talked about it on the show and i and i said you know, I, I would I would lean towards you. I don't like to make official picks because everyone gets mad at me when I do. I was surprised you were the betting underdog. Did you know that? Were you were you aware of that? Yeah, I was told um, a couple of times. I think it's the first time I've been the underdog in like ten fights or something like that. So it's it's a testament to to the level that that Tamura's at. Obviously, um, there's not many people I don't think in my position who would be undefeated and obviously close to to being on the verge of fighting these rank guys and, and fighting these big names that would love to take a fight with a guy like, like Tamu. He's very dangerous. He, he's not, he's not really an household name. You know, he's got this big, big reputation and a lot of hype behind him in, in Russia and stuff like that, but he's not an easy fight for anyone in the division. So it was a, it was a tough, tough task. And, and the fact that I was the underdog for the first time in a long time, you know, sort, sort of showed that a lot of people were writing me off in, 
in the media and online and stuff, but it was just full to the fire. I mean, I, I don't ever take no consideration to the art. I've had fights where I've been a massive favourite and, and they've ended up being a tough fight. So I don't take too much notice. I just know my friends are happy to, uh, to make a bit of cash whilst, uh, whilst obviously enjoying my performance. What are you thinking after the first round? Do you remember what you're thinking, what your coaches are telling you after the first round? I just knew it was close, and I, I could tell it was going to be close. As long as I, and I had a feeling going in, as long as this fight was going to was going to play out, it was never going to be one sided or the other. It was, it was always going to be close. Um, I thought he edged the first round just because he, he was very active, and and he just he changed his his feints were different, and his his attacks. He always varies his attacks. He would finish with a kick, and then he'd start with a kick. He was just a tough guy to get a read on, and um, you know, I just knew he'd take a little bit of working out. So I knew it was it was. It was a close first round. My, my corner felt like I won it, but sort of in the in the back of my mind, I knew that I need, needed to nick the next two to, you know, to not sort of be looking at a decision loss at the very worst. Okay, what are you thinking after the second round? The second round, I was a little bit more confident. I mean, I, going into the third, I could feel him getting tired. He'd he'd thrown everything at me but the kitchen sink, pretty much. You know, he was he was digging hundred percent into every shot, every kick. He was he was he was trying to smash my legs, my body, and. I think the fact I just stayed in front of him, I knew if I kept the pressure on him for long enough, he would have to crack eventually because of how frantic he is. He doesn't stop moving. He's constantly bouncing, constantly moving. And when you stay on a guy like that and cut him off for so long, he's got to eventually start to show cracks and start to get tired. And I could feel going into the third that he was guaranteed, guaranteed tired. And I thought, this this is my chance now to to let my hands go a little bit more and, and sort of let, let my attacks go because the reads were coming back. He wasn't throwing as much. And uh, I thought, again, it was close. I felt like I won the second, but in an ideal world, I wanted to go out there and put him away in the third because I, I didn't want to you know, fall victim to a close decision loss because of activity. I've see, seen him win fights like that before where he's not landing the most devastating shots in the world, but he's, he's outscoring his opponent on volume. And I thought, I can't, have that. I can't have that happen to me, especially in London. So I thought, I've just got to get out there and get straight back to work and get straight back on him. The third round was bonkers. Have you rewatched that yet? <laughs> Yeah, I managed to watch it. I watched little clips of it straight after, but um, I had a good watch last night. I watched it back twice, and um, yeah, it was just so chaotic. Like, <laughs> I mean, I put I, I put him I put him down, and I thought, right, just just stay on on top now and stay in control and and, and see the round out, and and that should be enough. And then next thing I know, I'm in a guillotine, and I was like, I could be going to sleep, but you're yeah, like, I, I'd, it wasn't on, and then. All of a sudden, I made like one little adjustment, and it just got really, really tight. And oh. I, you could probably hear my breathing. To be honest, I was gargling, and I thought, you know, I've, there's no way I'm going to be able to tap in front of all these lots. So I just thought, I'm, I'm either going to sleep or, or I'm getting out of the chalk. And uh, thankfully, a couple of seconds later, I managed to, to pop the head out, and then to, to put him down again. Then a couple of minutes later, it was just like, it was just fighting on pure instincts. It was, there was no sort of game plan, no sort of tactics at this point. It was just this is one of these career moments where you got to throw a bit of caution to the wind and, and just bite down and, and let, that, let that animalistic instinct take over. It, it was, it felt like a fight to the death in, in, in some way. Incredible. I didn't know what was going to happen next. You know, the, the, there's guys where you get in certain spots where this is it. Now I've got this round sealed off, but he wasn't one of them guys. Uh, do you like going back to the, uh, the guillotine? It looked super, super tight. I mean, it was kind of uh, reminiscent of, of Volkanovsky and, um, and Ortega just by how tight it was not exactly the same technique how close do you think you were to going out one like one false move one sort of little adjustment from him or one sort of false false move from me and I think I would have been locked off it, it, it would have been on um, wow. I knew if he got full guard I was in a, a world of trouble I, I, had his, I had his legs sort of stuffed between my legs in the half guard and I thought if he gets full guard you know <laughs> We're, we're in a bad, bad spot here. And, but even in half guard, it was just so tight. And like the placement of his fist was right on my Adam's apple. So I couldn't even, oh. you know, it wasn't even like I could just sort of shut my eyes and shut off and, and stay calm and just try and wait for his arms to burn. It was cranking my neck and choking me at the same time. And I just knew if I just did one thing wrong, if he made one adjustment I didn't, that I didn't counteract, I, I was, I was lights out. And um, obviously, thankfully, it, it didn't go that way. But it, it was definitely, it was, it, was, it was close. It was really close. Would you say, again, undefeated 16 and 0, is that the closest you've ever been to losing a fight? Yeah, well, without a shadow of a doubt. I've never, 
I've never been in a spot, especially in terms of like a submission like that, where you know I'm generally thinking in my, I'm having to make an agreement with myself and my ex. I was I was never going to tap, but it was like that split second in my head. It was like J just go to sleep. If if you can't get out, just just go to sleep. I I was just, I was just going to stay in there for as long as I could and. If it meant I had to go out in front of all the fans, unfortunately, that's what that's what it meant. But like there, there was, there was definitely last bit second where I thought that you know this is it. Like like you said, just like the Volkanovski fight, I think he said something similar where he just sort of thought I, I'm done, you, yeah? I'm done, and that's what I thought. But it, there's no quit in me. I mean, he, he like I say, he would have had to put me out for for the fight to be over. There was no way I was ever going to tap and, and and give him into it. When the fight ended, did you think you won? Say that again. When the fight ended, did you think you were getting the nod? Yeah, I, I think I did enough. Um, I thought I won the second, and I, I definitely knew. I knew I won the third. I even thought I deserved. I know. I know the Gillard team was very close, but to, to drop him twice in the third, I thought I could even have argued a, a, a ten eight. So I, I was confident. I looked in my corner, and I know they they would never not be realistic with me. You know, if they felt like it was close or they felt like I lost, they they would say to me, "Look, this, this is touch and go." Um, and to just see that they were they were so confident that sort of packed my confidence a little bit, you know. But people have people have got fucked by the judges before, so you know you could you never know until Bruce officially announced it. But I was you know, ninety percent confident that uh, that I'd done enough. What what do you remember after they announced that you had won? Bruce announced that you had won. The pop that you got. They're showing the fans with the uh, the Welsh flags and attend. Like what do you remember from the post announcement of you winning? It's just stuff that like stuff that you dream of as a kid, yeah. you know, just sc scanning around the arena and it was red Welsh jerseys and like red Jack Shaw t shirt and flags. The amount of Welsh flags in there, it must there must have been over hundred Welsh flags and just seeing the crowd going bonk. I mean it wasn't even really like a full stadium at this point. There was still a couple of empty seats, but they were just going out there was absolute chaos. It was drinks flying and uh -huh. and even then like like coming out of the cage and just seeing everyone going absolutely bonk because you you knew you was in the UK, like because you you know you don't necessarily see too much of that in in the US, where, where there's a guy uh, fighting on the prelims that that sort of gets that type of crowd pop and that type of crowd reaction. So it's stuff you dream of as a kid with 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 these big arenas and fighting at home and being being the hometown hero kind of thing. It, it's it's one I'll uh, it's, it's one I'll always remember. I saw some of the uh, the post event celebrations with uh, Molly and Patty. How crazy was it on Saturday night? <laughs> Do you know what it was? It wasn't too bad. Um, you know, my, Molly had a good party on. I think pa pa party was uh, me, me and party was um, wasn't quite on Molly's level. You know, she likes to she she wants she definitely won up us in the celebration front. But uh, it was good. I mean, um, they were chasing status were at the party. Wayne Rooney was at the party. Like all my friends were were absolutely blown away. Like like oh, oh, you know, we come from like a small little town in the Welsh Valleys and. Uh, I got a couple of Man United fans, uh, my, my couple of my friends, sorry, Man United fans, and they were just absolutely baffled that Wayne Rooney, they were in the same room, they were in the same after party as Wayne Rooney, they were all crazy. like, where's he too, where's he too, I have to go and get a photo, it was just crazy, like, it didn't, again, stuff that doesn't even seem real, like, you know, we, we're used to, to going in a pub and, it, and there's just a slot in there, and all of a sudden now I've just fought in front of 20,000 people and, and, and we're partying with, with Chase and Status and, and, and Wayne Rooney and, it was just a wild, it was a wild one, you know. But uh, Molly definitely outdone us on the uh, on the drinking point. That's for sure. She done me and Paddy quite easily. I love that. Like Wayne is just like a regular guy there. He's going into the locker room like an absolute yeah. legend. You, you know, it's crazy. He seems like a very down to earth guy. Yeah, literally. Like I, I didn't get a chance to to speak to him personally. But I just seen him in like he was no security, you know, nothing. And he's like a, he's obviously a superstar in the UK, Wayne. And he was just yeah. Cut, cutting about the place as if he was one of us, just, just your average guy. Like that's what blew my my, my mates' minds the most. I think they they can't quite understand like how, how Wayne Rooney's even allowed to be in the same sort of room as him. And uh, if he did have any dodge, dodgy conversations off uh, or some drunk Welsh boys, then uh, I, I do apologise on their behalf because uh, no doubt they uh, they did a good job of chewing his year off if they did manage to get near enough to him for a photo. Uh, Chase that you mentioned is that the DJ group there? Yeah, yeah, chasing state this. Yeah, though I know, I know one of those guys. Uh, one of the, he he, uh, we became friends online. I didn't realize that he was like this really big deal. I'm not as tuned into that world, and so they were back there too. Yeah, yeah. So I think they're. Um, 
I think they're quite friendly. <clears throat> excuse me, with my with my manager Graham, and um, ah. I know they they came. I, I know they watched me years ago. They they tweeted about me years ago when I fought in Cage Warriors. So I know obviously they they're MMA fans and stuff. And I'm just assuming that uh, because they were at the event, they spoke to Graham, and he was like, "Come <laughs> come along to the after party." But I managed to chat to chat to them and stuff. They they're two good guys, you know, really 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 nice guys and uh, <laughs> quality DJs as well. Amazing. Um, apologies for not knowing this. Uh, but uh, who who you are referencing? But I saw on your Instagram you wrote that one was for Big Jack Evans. Legends never die. Who is Jack Evans? So uh, Big Jack is um, he's my father's best friend, and um, he, he's sort of one of the you you could sort of call him like one of the original founders of my gym. Um, show MMA is obviously it used to be Tillery Combat, and uh, my my father sort of trained at the gym um, like a traditional martial arts gym, and he went, wanted to go off and do his own thing. And obviously, we needed um, like a location to train at. We needed equipment and stuff like that. And and Big Jack is like a lo- like a local businessman, and, and and he came on board, um, help help us sort of fund our our first gym. He, he even owned a building at one point where um we allowed us to train there for like ten years, and um you know we kitted out for us, built extensions, probably sponsored ninety percent of the boys in the gym from from their amateur career through to their pro career. And obviously, as I grew, grew up in the gym and grew, they became a very, really good friend of mine, and um. He unfortunately passed back back before Christmas. Um, just suddenly, you know, out, out of the blue, uh. no, no sort of underlying health conditions or anything. And, and he was a massive MMA fan, you know, massive UFC fan. Um, and I know, and I know for a fact, obviously, with it being in London, he he would have been the front row watching and and screaming and telling everybody how he knew me and and and, and telling everyone how trying probably trying to bet all, all the other people in the mm-hmm. crowd would, would would have been his. Uh, would have been his usual go to just just trying to vet people and 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 you know he couldn't uh, he couldn't do enough for you and he was constantly singing my praises to everyone that uh, that he came into contact to so to have sort of fight week and then fight night without him this one has been a little bit it was a little bit tough but it was just it didn't feel the same so uh, I had his name on my gum shield and it was just an, um, a little tribute to him I know he'd have been watching down and proud and um, he'd have. I don't think he would have been happy with the result, but I don't think it would have been a fight that was any good for his nerves. I mean, yeah. he, he, he enjoys me. He enjoys watching me go and dominate more. So a close one like that would have um, would have definitely spiked his heart rate. But yeah, he uh, legends never die. That's what we got in our gym. We got a poster of him, a big mural, and uh, yeah, he'll uh, he'll he'll be in there with us for everyone. I am sorry about that, um, but thank you for for telling us about him because I was wondering who he was and what he meant to you. Um, just amazing stuff, man. What a run you are on. Uh, what a story. And, and, you know, given your dad's influence on your career and he's always, he's always fighting your battles online on Twitter. I say anything <laughs> about you or remotely he's right. There's Richard Shore in the mentions. <laughs> he's got your back. I love it. I love it. Um, so 16 and 0 now, are we going to take a big step up? What do we want? I mean, I feel like it's time that we, you know, not a lot of guys are 16 and 0 in any weight class. I feel like we, it's time that we get some respect here and get some big names. What are you thinking? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I would like to think, you know, there's a lot of people mentioning that I may may possibly even get a ranking off the back of that fight. But if not, I mean, there's guys there like, you know, even even the I think a Sun Sal and Ricky Simone are like fifteen and fourteen. One of those two would would, would be a great fight. Um, you know, I want to fight again very soon. J- June would be perfect. So if they're not, but I'm not sure you'll probably know better than me. But if they're not booked up or if they look at the fight, I'd love, love to get it on one of them too in June. You know that that'd be that'd be ideal for me. I want to start climbing those rankings. Like I said, I've worked very hard to get to 16 and 0 and to get where I am. Um, I'm not the brashest of personalities or a trash talker, I know, but uh, I do feel like my skills do a lot of talking for me. And um, I think Saturday showed that I'm capable of um, of getting in there, mixing it with with some of the best guys in the world. So. Either of those two would, would, would be a great fight for me and um, good one for the fans as well. Is there a part of you that feels like, okay, you know, and and you said it yourself, like you, you're not like Patty in, in terms of your personality or even Molly, but like your record stands alone. It speaks for itself. Is there a part of you that's like, okay, enough is like, I need to start getting a little more attention, a little more respect around this sport? Yeah, well, look, it's, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not boxing. It's not easy to go sixteen and zero in MMA. Yes. You know, and then there's that, like, you know, twelve and zero is an amateur. I mean, I'm, I'm, like, there's twenty eight fights, twenty eight straight wins. Um, that's not an easy feat for for anyone. So, I, I think it is time now that I start getting mentioned with these bigger names. And and you know, I think 
a performance like that Saturday is what I needed, you know, to, to show that when I'm in tough spots and the going gets tough a little bit, that I'm not going to be, you know, this this sort of guy who's all right. He, he's had it all his own way. Now he faced a bit of adversity. He just sort of rolls over and quits. You know, I could have quite easily tapped, or or, or that could have been the end of the of, of the. I could have lost a decision on points on on the weekend. You know, and I not made vital adjustment. So I feel like my skills should start talking for me now, and um, I, I deserve to be in there with some of the best in the world. And it's about time as well. I had a, had a rank fighter again. By the way, do you even remember what it's like to lose at anything? I I do, yeah, I do. I, I I'm not a sore loser, but I, I do hate losing. And I'm um, like I, the the last fight. I mean, I've lost like grappling matches and stuff like that. But the last sort of like competitive fight I lost was out in Sweden in in 2013. It was an amateur boxing fight, and um, you know, I I felt like I won, but you know, what amateur boxing's like, and uh, yeah, it just stung. It just the I just remember thinking, I. Oh, I fucking hate this feeling. I hate losing. My all my uncles are competitive sports and my mother always calls them sore losers. So she, she always bred into me not to be a sore loser. But uh, as my old man said, there's nothing wrong with hating the feeling of losing. You know, even yes. if you gotta suck it up and get on with it sometimes. So uh, I do remember what it feels like, and uh, you know, there, there's nothing like a win. I'm, I'm much rather win than lose the any day of the week. Like money and stuff like that aside, just the the feeling in your heart when you lose is is it destroys me every time. By the way, how many amateur boxing matches did you have? Uh, five. five. Five amateurs. Any pro? No, no, no pro. I've, I've, I, my boxing trainer is a pro boxing coach, Gary Lockett, and um, I've done some sparring and stuff for the guys down there, but but no pro. You know, they're uh, I under, I'm one of these guys. I don't want to. I don't want to like try and downplay it. I understand how good these these pro boxers are and. You know, it'd be like me training the same discipline twice a day, six days a week. They, they, they're, they're a different class. And there are obviously MMA athletes that can cross over. And I could probably jump in with a couple of journeymen at, at pro boxing and pick up a few wins. So who knows? Maybe in the future, it'll, it'll be one for the bucket list. But uh, no, no, no pro yet. And no sort of <laughs> no goal lines of any any pro fight for boxing just yet anyway. Okay. Uh, but, and what's the, the, the Twitch uh, stream name? I I think it's just, it's just Jack Shaw MMA. Same as okay. my Instagram, my Twitter. Um, I've been quiet the last couple of weeks also with camp, but uh, I've got a bit more free time now, so I can uh, I can geek it out for a couple of hours at a time. So I'll I'll definitely be on there this week. I may even chuck it on my YouTube as well. I know there's uh, my YouTube guy Joe's been telling me all well, YouTube's just a completely different game to what I thought it was. It is so much you can do on there now. So I may even stream on YouTube as well. But uh, what do you play? I'll keep everyone updated. Uh, Warzone, Warzone, or uh, we're we're back on the GTA wagon as well. We're okay. uh, me and a couple of the boys are uh, are going old school with GTA, but uh, we're not the best. Man, don't go on the way your hopes up thinking you're gonna see uh, hmm. you know, some elite level gamer because that's not what you're gonna get. We we're, we're, we're pretty shit if anything, but uh, we just we just like the we like to go on in for a laugh just to, to unwind a little bit from training. Well, enjoy that. Enjoy the victory, my friend. Sixteen in a row as a pro, as you said, twelve. Uh, as an amateur, an incredible feat, and uh, yeah, what what a fight! That's you know, I'm I'm assuming not every fighter. You certainly don't want to get hit. You don't want to be put in tough spots like the the guillotine. But those are the kinds of fights that get people really behind you and start falling in love with you. So uh, I thought you should have won fight of the night. Hopefully you are rewarded for that, and and hopefully we get to see you back in June. That would be lovely as well. A quick turnaround for you. So thank you very much, Jack. And again, congratulations on the win. Thank you, Ariel. Thanks for having me on. All right. Talk to you soon. There he is, Jack Tank Shore. And yes, I agree. He should be uh, ranked. It's tough at 135. 135 is, uh, is quite stacked.